in a small town called Poto, there lived a beautiful girl called Neka. Unlike her siblings, who were all beautiful, handsome, and academically intelligent, Neka wasn't as beautiful and had the lowest grades in school. Her teachers disliked her because she was very slow in learning and she had only one friend called Uzioma. Uzioma was more intelligent and attractive than Neka was, but she admired Neka's humility and personality. When Uzioma first arrived at St. John's Community School, Neka was the first person who offered her a seat beside her when the other students refused, and since then, they have been the best of friends. Everyone disliked Neka and called her a dullard. Her parents at home weren't any different. They treated Neka differently because she always took the last position in class. When her siblings came home celebrating with very good grades, they would mock Neka because they knew she always came last in class. At the end of each term in school, Neka would lock herself inside her room and cry her eyes out. Her parents always bought gifts for her siblings because they did well in school, but all they gave Neka was always scoldings and mockery. Neka had no one she could talk to except Ozioma, and Ozioma would always console her. Don't think too much about it, Neka. There are other ways to succeed in life. The fact that you are not academically gifted doesn't mean you are a failure. Hmm. Tell that to my mother and father. They call me a disappointment and a disgrace. My younger ones are all doing well in school, but the opposite is my case. Don't let their words weigh you down. Instead of being discouraged, fight hard to prove them wrong. Don't show them that they are right about you. There has to be something you are very good at. Neka thanked Ozioma for the kind words and she went home and thought hard about what Ozioma had said. She thought deep and hard. The next day, Neka told her father that she would like to learn how to sew clothes. Papa, please, I would love to learn how to sew clothes. After school every day, I want to go to a tailor shop and learn how to sew. Neka's father laughed heartily at her statement. He looked at her with surprise and told her, You think I pluck money from trees? You find it difficult to pass your examinations in school, yet you want me to pay for you to learn tailoring. If you are learning in school, then how can you sew? Neka pleaded with her father to her sister, but he bluntly refused. She met her mother and pleaded for assistance, but her mother equally pushed her away. As usual, Neka went to her room and started crying. She asked herself if they were truly her parents. Why she cried? She remembered the words Ozioma told her and she stopped crying. She told herself that crying wouldn't solve her problems. So she decided she would do anything she can to raise the money and learn how to sew. Every day after school hours, Neka would go to the market and offer to help random customers carry their goods on her head to their houses. The market women were impressed by her humility, so they would always seek her services. Many of them paid her more than they bargained because she was very simple and understanding. Neka did this without her parents' knowledge. She bought a small box in which she saved the little money she got. And after some months, Neka was able to save up the required amount and she started learning how to sew in secret. Ozema supported her and each time Neka's parents asked her where Neka was, Ozema would lie to them. She would tell them that Neka was with her at home studying for their exams. One day, Neka's father was on his way back from work when he saw Neka in a tailor shop. He confronted the owner of the shop and she told him that Neka had paid the tutorial fees and had been learning for some months. Neka's father became very furious. He slapped Neka in front of everyone and sent her home. 
When he got home, he accused Neka of stealing his money and sent her out of his house. Neka's mother returned from the market, but then she saw her husband taking Neka's things outside the house. She quickly rushed to stop him. Please, my husband, don't do this. No matter her offense, please forgive her. This bastard stole my money and paid for a tailoring tutorial. This orphan went against my words. She's a complete failure that can't amount to anything in life. Please take it easy, my husband. Forgive her. I will pay you for whatever she stole from you. I don't need your money and I don't need her. She's not my daughter. I can't continue raising another man's child. I want her to leave my house this instance. Neka couldn't believe her ears. She was very confused. Ever since she could talk, she had referred to him as her father. He was the only father that she knew. So she didn't understand what he meant by raising another man's child. Neka stood and watched as her mother tried to plead with her father to forgive her. After watching hopelessly for a while, Neka picked up her things and left the compound. Her mother tried to run after her, but Neka's father screamed at the top of his voice. If you go with her, then go and remain with her. Do not ever step foot in this house again. Immediately, Neka's mother heard his words. She froze where she stood and watched in pain as Neka walked away. Neka went to meet Ozioma, her friend. She wept and told Ozioma what had happened. But Ozioma couldn't help her because Ozioma's parents didn't know Neka too well. Neka had no choice, so she went to meet the lady from which she learns teller and form. She narrated her story to the woman and begged her to accommodate her. The woman felt pity for Neka and took her in. Every morning, Neka would wake up very early, help the woman with the chores and the shop. Ozioma equally came every day after school to see Neka. The woman felt very impressed with how diligent Neka was. So one day, she asked Neka, You've been staying with me for weeks now and your parents haven't come looking for you. What about your education? Don't you want to go to school anymore? My father clearly told me that I am not his daughter and my mother didn't argue with him when he said that. I'm not intelligent and I'm sure my father has stopped paying my school fees. I admire the way you've been handling everything since you started living with me. You are a very fast learner, but I cannot be selfish. I want you to go back to school, but a different school. I will continue teaching you how to sew, and I will also pay your school fees. At some point in your life, you would need a basic education certificate. Neka thanked the woman for her kindness and promised that she would do her best to improve in her academics and make the woman proud. Neka continued going to school, and whenever she returned, she would continue learning how to sew. Two years later, Neka didn't hear from her parents and they didn't search for her either. She learned all there was to learn about sewing and also got her high school certificate. Ozioma, her friend, equally got her certificate and went to the big city to further her education. The woman trusted Neka so much that she comfortably left her in charge of the shop and whenever customers came to have their clothes made, most of them insisted that they want Neka to make their dresses. As time went on, the woman started harboring hatred and envy towards Neka because most of her clients preferred Neka. Many of them would rather wait for Neka to be done with whatever dress she was sewing instead of giving it to the woman. This made the woman very bitter and one day she falsely accused Neka and sent her out of the house. Neka pleaded and pleaded but her pleas fell on deaf ears. She left the woman's house and was unable to go back home and she had nowhere else to go. She remembered Ozioma and placed a call through to her. Hello, who am I speaking with? 
it's your best friend Neka. They exchange pleasantries and Neka asked her for help. I don't have anywhere else to go. My master falsely accused me and sent me out of her house. Please, can you help me? Ozioma felt pity for Neka once again and asked her to come and live with her in the city. Neka used her little savings and boarded a bus to the city. When she got to Ozioma's house, it was a studio apartment but it was wide enough to accommodate the both of them. She thanked Ozioma once again for her generosity and the next day she went out in search of a job. She was fortunate to find a fashion designer who needed a worker. She quickly applied for the post. She presented her school certificate to the employer and did some tests on the sewing machine. Neka couldn't contain her joy when she was told she had been employed and Ozioma was very happy for her. Neka resumed work the next day and in a short while everyone was fond of her. She surprised everyone with her skills and designs. She was promoted to chief designer in less than six months and she started earning a lot of money. She moved out of Ozioma's house into her house and started saving to build her own fashion brand. Meanwhile, her siblings back at home had all finished school, but they were jobless despite the fact that they all had very good grades. After searching for jobs in their town without success, they decided to come to the city. Just like their father mocked Neka when she was always last in class, he mocked his children for not being able to secure a job after all he had spent on their education. One day, Neka was on her way to work when a woman called her on the street. Neka recalled the face of the woman, but she wasn't sure where. So the woman explained to her, I'm one of your best customers when you were still an apprentice for your master. I was sad when she told me you had left, but I'm very happy to see you now. So what are you doing now? Oh, I'm equally glad to meet you, ma. I'm currently saving up to start my own brand, but currently I work at... The woman interrupted Neka before she would finish. She opened a very expensive purse and gave it to Neka. Please, call me later tonight. I love your clothes back then and I would love to invest in your intended fashion brand. Give me a call, like I said, so we can meet up and discuss better. Hmm? Neka thanked the woman and went off to work. Immediately she got off work that day, she called the woman and they met at a popular restaurant. Tell me the cost of everything you need. I would give you the money as my own part of the investment. Then later, I would call my lawyer to draft out an agreement of our terms. Neka couldn't believe her ears. She thanked the woman so much and handed the woman a list of things she had previously written down. The woman took the list home and the next day she called Neka to meet her lawyer to sign some documents and also collect the money. Some months after, Neka had started her own fashion brand. She became a national sensation. A lot of people patronized her and she had many apprentices. Neka became well known and a public figure. One day, she was in her office when a man requested to see her. Neka was shocked to see that the man was one of her siblings. He went on his knees and pleaded with Neka to employ him. He explained how he and his other siblings had been in the city for many years, but they were unable to secure a good job despite how educated and outstanding their degrees were. I have nothing against you. If there's a department in my company where you can fit in, then I'll employ you. Neka asked him to visit the Human Resource Department and he was employed instantly. Her siblings thanked her profusely. Then he told Neka that their mother is very sick and ever since Neka left, she hadn't been herself. Neka quickly booked a flight to the Apoto town and went to see her mother. When she entered the house, her mother was lying down very sick on the bed. Neka knelt beside her and held her hand. Mama, I'm sorry I left without coming back. Please forgive me. 
with tears streaming down her eyes, Neka pleaded for her mother's forgiveness. Her mother slowly turned her head and with all the strength she could find, she told Neka, I should be the one sorry. I am deeply sorry. I have greatly offended you, my daughter. Your biological father is dead. <coughs> I lied to you. The man who chased you away isn't your biological father. <sighs> I got married to him when you were only four months old. Your biological father died in a car crash when I was pregnant with you. That was why he treated you the way he did. Please forgive me. Neka started crying when her mother told her the truth. I forgive you, Mama. Immediately she said these words. Her mother breathed her last and died. As if she has been waiting for Neka's forgiveness before she could pass away. Neka wept and mourned her mother deeply. She gave her mother a befitting burial. Neka also visited the woman who trained her in the art of tailoring. When she got to the woman's shop, it was very scanty and her sewing machines were obsolete. The woman equally apologized for what she did. She confessed she framed Neka because of envy. Neka told her, I've forgiven you a long time ago. I owe my success to you and if you hadn't done what you did, I wouldn't be where I am today. Neka bought new expensive machines for the woman and also renovated her shop. She also helped her siblings secure better paying jobs through her numerous contacts in the city. Ozioma enjoyed in the success of Neka as all her wares were made for free. Ozioma and Neka got married the same day to caring and responsible men. Neka continued to grow successful. She had beautiful kids and they all lived happily ever after. The moral lesson of the story teaches us that we are blessed in one way or the other. We aren't all created the same. If everyone is a banker and a doctor, who is going to be the mechanics fixing your cars and engines? There's something we are all good at. The goal is to find it and capitalize on it. No one knows tomorrow and the future is unpredictable. Life is unscripted. It is wise to be good to others because they may also be your climbing ladder tomorrow. Sometimes a disappointment can be a blessing. God can use the disappointment of some people in your life to push you to a better place. So whatever you're going through in life, see it as a phase you have to pass through in order to arrive at your destined height. In whatever you do, strive to be the best and do it in love and with passion. When people are aware of your excellence, it would open doors of opportunities and favor you. Let your excellence speak for you and convince people of your standards.